This is the GNW electric engine unit of the future and the electric load leveler unit for use by utilities. They are two new energy storage system units which Gulf and Western believes are destined to have a significant impact on the United States and the world. They are the culmination of an eight-year search to find the practical, economic, and speedy way for America to begin to reduce its dependence on imported oil. Let's take a look at how this was achieved. In 1972, a Gulf and Western Research and Development Task Force evaluated all of the existing systems in the world of batteries. They included the sodium sulfur, lithium metal sulfide, lead acid, nickel zinc, nickel iron, and silver zinc batteries, and one other, the zinc chloride system. The comparisons are astonishing. In the working area of the cells, the zinc chloride system operates at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Sodium sulfur and lithium metal sulfide exceed 600 degrees Fahrenheit. In the ability to achieve an acceptable cycle life without failure, nickel zinc falls far short. As far as cost is concerned, silver zinc is prohibitive. In energy density and watt hours per kilogram, lead acid and nickel iron just can't compete. Thus, the zinc chloride system was chosen. It alone operates at room temperature, has a low production cost, is safe, long-lived, highly efficient, lightweight, and all of its major materials are in plentiful supply in our own country. Still, there was a problem. The principle of zinc chloride electrochemical coupling had long been known, but no one knew how to store the chlorine safely. GNW's discovery was the key to making the system viable. The breakthrough was achieved by storing the chlorine as hydrate, Cl2-8H2O. Chlorine hydrate is an ice-like material in which eight water molecules surround each chlorine molecule and insulate it safely. It freezes at a relatively high temperature, 48 degrees Fahrenheit, and decomposes slowly. Here's how this system works. Each unit consists of two chambers, a store, and a cell. Is totally sealed. And all parts requiring maintenance are on the outside. Each full-sized unit contains 60 cells, holding 4,002 graphite plate electrodes. Half of these plates are alternately spaced zinc electrodes, and half are alternately spaced chlorine electrodes. Importantly, because the zinc chloride system has no active materials in its electrodes, it does not consume itself and deteriorate as do the lead acid and zinc nickel oxide systems. In a fully discharged unit, the electrolyte, a solution of water and zinc chloride salt, is held in the cell and the store. To charge the unit, a pump motor circulates the concentrated electrolyte from the store to the cell chamber. There, the zinc in the solution is attracted and deposited onto the zinc electrodes. The chlorine in the solution then escapes as a gas and is pumped into the store, where in mixture with water from the diluting electrolyte, it is chilled and forms frozen chlorine hydrate. This circulating process continues until all of the zinc is coated on the zinc graphite electrodes and all of the chlorine mixed with water is frozen in the store chamber. The remaining warm water from the electrolyte is held in the cell chamber. The entire process requires six to eight hours for a 100% charge. To produce electricity, the warm water in the cell is pumped into the store, where it gradually melts the chlorine hydrate. This melted hydrate is circulated into the cell, where, as it passes through the graphite plate electrodes, the chlorine gas, which is like carbonated gas in soda water, is released from the hydrate and combines with the zinc on the zinc graphite electrodes. This coupling produces electricity at the system's terminals. Then the used coupled zinc chloride falls back into the circulating solution in the cell, reforming the zinc chloride electrolyte in ever-increasing concentrations until the chlorine hydrate 
has been completely melted. When this occurs, the system has delivered its full charge of electricity, and the electrolyte is once again a 100% concentrated solution. Here is a demonstration model of the cell chamber without a store chamber for the frozen chlorine hydrate. Notice that the frozen chlorine hydrate is so safe it can be handheld. As the chlorine hydrate is inserted into the demonstration model, it begins to melt, just as it would in the actual unit store chamber when warm water is pumped against it. The melted chlorine hydrate is now being pumped through and over the cell's graphite plates, where the chlorine gas, the bubbles you see on top of the cells, is released and attracted to the graphite plates coated with zinc. When the chlorine makes contact with the zinc, electric power is generated at the electrodes. Watch what happens. Power. Power for lights, such as in your home. Power for action, such as in a car. Now that we know how the system works, how is this power to be used? How can it help our country reduce its dependence on imported oil? One major application of Gulf and Western's energy storage system technology is the Gulf and Western electric load leveler unit 6X10. We all depend on utilities to supply us with electricity when we want it. However, when we all want it at the same time, we create what are called peak periods. And because utilities very often can't meet that demand, they use costly turbines and other less energy efficient means to generate extra peak period electricity. At night, when there's less demand, off peak periods, the supply of electricity is not fully used. Thus, utilities are functioning on an uneven and wasteful basis. The Gulf and Western Electric Load Leveler Unit is a solution to that problem. During periods of low demand, it is charged and stores electricity. During periods of high demand, it delivers that electricity, eliminating the need for costly and fuel-wasting equipment. For example, as a companion to a utility substation, 2,000 modules would be able to supply the peak electricity needs of a city of 60,000, such as Troy, New York, or Kaga, Japan. And the Gulf and Western system is so safe that a substation could be located even in residential areas. Now, here is the other application of the Gulf and Western energy storage system technology. The Gulf and Western electric engine unit 2X30. Look what happens when the unit is adapted to an already existing vehicle. We eliminate the internal combustion engine. Ignition system lubrication system, fuel and exhaust system, emission control system, and all of their attendant parts and cost. The shape of the electric engine unit is extremely flexible. Here it is in a van weighing 3,000 pounds, including the unit. In a van weighing 7,000 pounds, including the unit. And in a Volkswagen Rabbit. Only the Gulf and Western electric engine unit can deliver its rated power for 95% of its discharge cycle, compared, for example, to the rapidly declining performance of the lead-acid system. It is virtually fail-safe. If one of its 60 cells fails, it experiences only a 2% loss of power, as opposed to all other electric battery systems where a breakdown in any individual cell results in an almost certain total loss of power. It is remarkably easy to charge overnight in your garage by plugging it into a relatively inexpensive converter which changes 220 volt AC to 120 volts DC. And, unlike other systems, the GNW electric engine unit cannot be overcharged or overdischarged. The electric vehicle powered by the GNW system will offer significant economic advantages to its owner. The price to fuel it is approximately one-third of that for a gasoline-driven car. In these times of ecological concern, remember that the electric vehicle produces absolutely no emissions and is virtually noiseless. And it's totally non-combustible. Even if dead shorted, it will not explode. Nor will it go up in flames like a gasoline system would if struck by an outside force. 
Further, the electric engine unit will, in all probability, last longer than the body of the vehicle in which it is housed. The cell, the heart of the system, has already completed more than 1,400 cycles of continuous testing over a four-year period, 100% charging and discharging without a single failure, the equivalent of 200,000 miles of faultless performance. And most significantly, no degradation of electrode performance has taken place compared to the rapid deterioration of other systems as they are continuously cycled. Only the Gulf and Western electric engine unit has the capability to deliver uniform performance through day in and day out continuous cycling and assure that its performance after 1400 cycles will be equal to the standards established on the very first charging cycle. But these credentials merely reflect the performance of the Gulf and Western electric engine unit when adapted to a vehicle designed for an internal combustion engine. If a vehicle were designed to maximize the potential of the electric engine unit, it should significantly improve its performance. The development of the Gulf and Western energy storage system units and the operation of our first pilot production plant in Greensboro, North Carolina have been a joint effort of the Electric Power Research Institute, the Department of Energy, and Gulf and Western. To date, the Department of Energy and EPRI have invested more than $13 million in this project and have committed another $14 million, added to the more than $16 million of its own funds Gulf and Western has already spent. These, then, are the Gulf and Western Energy Storage System Units, energy-related developments from Gulf and Western science and technology. Thank you.